Something in the basement. This is an experience I had. Hello, I've been reading this sub for a little while, and interacting comments from time to time, but I have not much spoken about my full experiences with that unknown realm that gives many of us great curiosity about whether or not ghosts really exist. Now, I, I apologize in advance for my waffling nature and the very long understatement post. I am not the most eloquent one storytelling, but you may enjoy. I waffle and I ramble, sometimes very badly. This story post is one of those what the fuck just happened events that your brain cannot make logical sense of, and the more you think about it, the less it makes sense. Hope it is not too long and that I make sense. Backstory preface. We are now traveling back to the late 1990s. My, my mother, brother, and I live in a little Cape Town that we rented for several years, allowing me to lay out the house. It was a boxy, squared-shaped house. When you walk through the front door, you step right into a small living room. On the left wall was the stairway up to my mother's room. If you walk straight, you landed in the kitchen and dining area. In the kitchen, on the right wall, was the back door to a patio and garden. If you made a left at the kitchen archway, there was the basement stairwell door on the left, then my bedroom. Straight ahead was my brother's bedroom. On the right was the bathroom, so small and compact, with the basement stairwell door located right smack on the middle of the house. The basement was a fully furnished area with some storage as well. In that house, we always felt that the energy was just different, most specifically in the basement and on the top floor. We couldn't put our finger on it, but it was off. We mostly paid little attention to it. My mother and I recall the same heavy feeling in a home we lived in where we were residing in England. It was the same heavier atmosphere in the basement of this cape. We generally just chalked it up to the creepy, huge gold-framed mirror and gaudy old-fashioned furniture that was being stored down there. It was the landlord stuff, and it was all stacked in the corner of the room. We just played around it. The mirror creeped us all out, so we used to throw a sheet or blanket over it. The basement was where my brother generally hung out with friends. We listened to music, played video games, and did whatever else teenagers do. Little brother eventually moved his bedroom from the main floor and took over the basement. I should also mention that we had a cat, Sasha. She moved into the basement too, as she took a liking to my brother and gave birth to surprise kittens down there shortly before this incident. At one point, we also had a foster dog Baron a pit bull. Both pets were very chill. The dog was loving and so friendly. He would play with anyone who paid attention to him. The cat was a typical cat that approached you for petting on her own terms. Neither of the pets behaved viciously and were not skittish or prone to biting or scratching. Both generally seemed to enjoy human company. They were also civil and relatively friendly towards one another. Now, on many occasions, while sitting in the living room, we would catch the pets reacting to something we could not see. It was generally a benign feeling. For example, the dog's head would be tilting and his ears would perk up, like someone was interacting with him. On other side of the room, where there was not a physical person in sight, we would sit on the couch and say, What is it, boy? And he would do a playful puppy would do, sort of move around, like someone was going to pet him or throw him a bone or something. Bouncing on his front paws and giving short, soft woofs and looking back and forth between us on the couch and whatever was on the other side of the room. A cat was also known to sit quietly and then suddenly raise her head and follow something around the room with her eyes. She would just sit calmly on the floor or couch arm and follow with her eyes and head as of watching a fly in motion, buzzing around the room, her tail end once in a while flickering ever so slightly, but otherwise relatively chilled out. Several times the dog would be next to you on the floor then, he would get up as if he were greeting someone coming in from the kitchen and then lay back down. And from time to time, the cat would wander into the room and react to the same unseen presence, like she was walking past another human in the room and looking at that same thing Baron was. The Incidents Number 1 Now, a short while prior to something I can't explain, my brother and friends decided to hang out in the basement. We have been binging on ghost stories and checking out the local graveyards as a group. We were all very interested in and intrigued by the prospect of paranormal activity. 
at some point, Selene decided to whip out their Ouija board to see if we could summon whatever we were feeling at the last graveyard. Off came the sheet that was thrown over that gaudy mirror, just leaning casually up against the wall. I know to help out, and left once the O-board came out. I don't do Ouija boards. My brothers and friends continued playing when dusk came. They all ventured out to Mary's grave, a local haunt of sorts. I stayed in my bedroom, tinkering with my crafts and sewing. We had all been to Mary's grave a hundred times, and I just wasn't up to it at that evening. I lost track of time and came out of my bedroom to make a cup of tea and let the dog inside. He would generally hang in the back garden and come in and out of the back kitchen door. So I put the kettle on and opened the back door. I called the dog and he came to the back door, but then he, he stopped very suddenly at the threshold of the door. I made the usual sounds when you're trying to coax a pest to come to you. He bounced around on the, on the patio like he wanted to play. I wanted him to come inside again. Once at the thresh threshold, he wasn't budging, so I went outside, tossed the frisbee, and he retrieved it. We played for a few minutes, and he was his usual playful self. When I heard the kettle whistling, I jogged back to the kitchen door, and Baron followed me. I entered the kitchen, turned off the gas, and turned to Dog, who was still standing outside at the threshold, door wide open. I poured my tea water and went over to the door to bring him inside. He still wouldn't come inside. He began pacing the back patio lightly, tail wagging, tongue dangling out. But when nearing the threshold, he lowered his head, almost cowering, when at the door to come in. My teen self thought it was odd, but no big deal. He, he had never done this before, and I'd always just sort of bounce back into the kitchen after his yard play, but whatever. So I, I tugged on his collar a little, and he resisted. I tugged a bit more, and he held back with more strength. He put his front paws on the door sash, simply refusing to cross it almost looking like he wanted to wriggle out of his collar. I couldn't make sense of it, and so I decided to let him be and retreat to my bedroom to finish my project. Number two. After another while, it was time for a tea refill, so I grabbed my teacup and headed back out to the kitchen. This moment happened so fast, but for me, it was like a, a, a slow motion picture. I opened my bedroom door, walked out of my bedroom, teacup in hand, and turned right to go into the kitchen. The basement door to my right was closed, and Sasha the cat was sitting there peacefully in front of the door and cat flap, casually cleaning her paws and ears. She had presumably come upstairs for a break from her kins. As I approached Kitty, I distinctly heard my brother's footsteps coming up the creaky wooden stairs from the basement. I greeted the cat as I approached her and bent down to pet her, as I normally would. She purred and rubbed her head into my hand, welcoming my kitty love. At that moment, I heard the second the top step creak. The door handle pulled down, and the door opened ajar. This is where time freezes. I saw the door handle go down, and fully expected my brother to exit the basement, figuring he was back from his adventure, and came back home, and in through the basement door, I got up from petting Sasha, and moved out of the way of the door as to not be in the way. As the door opened, not more than a foot, almost in slow motion, the cat screeched like bloody hell, back arching, hair standing fully on end, ears back, eyes bugging out. Front paws went up, and she literally climbed and clawed her way up my leg, torso and shoulder, completely panicked and screaming like a banshee. I, in turn, freaked the hell out, dropped my teacup, the cup hit the floor, shattering, tea bag splatting on the floor, and my tea remains splashing up the side of the counter, all while I am screaming bloody murder in utter shock. While the cat climbed my body, leapt off my shoulder, darted onto the end table thing, into the living room, skittered frightfully across the carpet, bounced off the couches, totally spooked, back into the kitchen, skidding on the line, turning on the counter edge, and scrambled into my bedroom to hide under my bed. Never, ever had I seen her so spooked out. Just when I Sasha and I screamed, my mom came bolting down the stairs from her bedroom. She thought someone had broken inside and was attacking me. At the bottom of the stairs and now in the living room, Mom saw my frenzied state and was trying to determine what the hell was going on. I told her the cat had freaked out. I turned to the basement door looking for my brother. I was hysterical and so confused. At that second, the door, the front door opened. And in scrolled my brother and his friends. All giddy. Back from their adventures at Mary's grave. I, I just stood there in disbelief, reiterating what happened. My mother and I tried to wrap our heads around the occurrence. My brother and friend swore they were out for several hours, and had not returned until that very moment. We figured Sasha was wildly hormono, as she had new kins, but that made no sense. The kins were in the basement. She was up on the main floor by basement door, calm as a cucumber, until that door opened. 
we had interacted with the kittens in her presence and never had an issue. My dog is now bouncing around hysterically and pawing at the back door after seeing and hearing all the commotion. My brother went to the kitchen door to let Baron in. He was the same. He would just not cross over the threshold. Not wanting to choke and hurt the dog, my brother picked Baron up and walked into the kitchen. Baron, wriggling furiously out of his arms, scrambling past the basement door and into the living room right to the corner, curling up under the other end table. I am still confused as shit to this point. Upset, disheveled, and scratched to hell. Claw waltz up all on my right leg, torso, and shoulder. A little while later, after all was calm, we were sitting at the kitchen table. Sasha wandered out from my bedroom, cautiously looking like a scared rabbit, creeping oh so slowly. First peeking around the corner to be sure, the coast was clear, sprinting along the short hallway wall, and past the basement door with her hair slightly raised and her tail all whacked out into the living room. My brother got up to check out downstairs, figuring Sasha would follow him. She wouldn't go back into the basement. She stood in the front of the open door, ears back, hair up, back arching, hissing and growling. After a while, we brought the kids upstairs to the spare bedroom because Kitty refused to have anything to do with that basement after that scare. To this day, we still have no idea what the frig happened. I attribute it to playing with something we we're not supposed to be tinkering with and maybe even uncovering that creepy ass mirror while playing with it. You know, just one of those freak things that I just can't wrap your head around. If you made it to the end of my eye waffle, thank you ever so much sticking it out and reading my long ass story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I didn't ruin anyone's sleep cycle. <laughs>
the hallway was empty except for a low rolling rack that tenants could use to transport belongings when moving in or out of the building. I rode the elevator down to the basement and the door opened. I heard a faint noise coming from the laundry room. I thought it was another tenant, but as I got closer, it sounded like... It sounded like moaning and sobbing. The entire laundry room was visible from the doorway. Washers on the left, dryers on the right, a table along the back wall for folding. There was a child, a little white girl. There was only one white tenant in the building, me, a single woman with no children, was hunched up under the table, wearing a white dress and a pink sweater. Her long black hair was disheveled, and her face was hidden in her pale hands. Now, uh, freaked out, I, I made a sound. She looked up at me, her eyes like black hole. Immediately on seeing me, she leapt up and ran past me out of the room. A chill lingered where she'd passed. I was freaked out because I I'd never seen this girl in the building before, and I had no idea who she belonged to or why she was there like that, and especially why she was crying in her basement like that. Being an adult, I decided to see if she needed any help. I turned back into the basement hallway and I was alone. But I heard the elevator go back upstairs when I got off and it hadn't been called back down yet. There was no way she could have just disappeared like that. That fire door on the stairwell was also locked as well. So I walked over and checked just to be sure. She had completely 100% vanished without a trace. The hallway itself was freezing cold. So, I, I got my dirty laundry, called the elevator back down, and went back to my apartment, quaking in fear. I never used that laundry room again, taking my stuff several blocks to a laundromat instead. Less convenient, sure, but no sobbing little ghost girl to freak me out. I left that city years ago, but I'll never, I'll never forget that time in the laundry room.